Okay, good morning, folks. It is Thursday, June 13th, 2024, and uh, I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland here, and I'm gonna go meet up with some folks um, from Sustrans to talk about the uh, things that they're doing to make it easier to walk and cycle around this area. We had a fabulous day here at the inn last night. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, fortunately, they did have a full-on dinner there as well. In fact, I think they're more of a restaurant than <laughs> necessarily a hotel, uh, but it worked out perfectly. So, uh, looks like we're in rush hour traffic here this morning on this main road in this part of the area. Uh, so, hey, let's uh, get out there and mix it up with traffic and uh, go see Amelia Hanna uh, with Sustrans and some of the friends and colleagues that uh, she has lined up for us to meet today. Okay, let's do it. And you can see we did have a, a transit stop right there. Woohoo! These are some rough roads. We're gonna get uh, jiggled up here for a little bit. Again, we're uh, riding through an area where it's definitely a suburban context. I do see that it is relatively car dependent, although it does look like we have transit that is patrolling this area patrolling saw sign says patrol serving this area which is nice to see our journey this morning to our meetup place is not that particularly long in terms of distance I've uh, only got about eight more minutes to go uh, there was a gentleman riding to work as well. We're actually going to divert off of this main road. Thank you very much. Drop down to a, a, a curvier route, as I understand. Cycle Network, number five, sharp left here. Very nice. And uh, it does say that this is National Cycle Route uh, number 75. Again, cities being able to take advantage of networks such as this. We're following along a stream right here. So this is a riparian corridor area. So great opportunity for cities to create pleasant, inviting, alternative mobility pathways that are also quite pleasant and enjoyable to be able to get to or meaningful destinations like this meetup this morning. And we got nice benches here, some houses. got a pathway connector up to that street and those houses and it looks like we have stairs leading right up into that uh, neighborhood and community too often these facilities get minimized and nominalized by viewing them strictly as recreational facilities and then they get walled off from the neighboring communities. And really what needs to happen is you need to have a good integration 
with the housing so that uh, people are able to access just like the stairway right there. There's nothing more frustrating than making the investment in these types of facilities and then turning around and minimizing the effectiveness and the usefulness by walling them off. A little waterfall here. Hope you could hear that. Nice waterfall action. Not sure if you saw that, but that back there, there was a little stair, some stairs leading down to that little footbridge. And then it looks like there's a footpath on the other side. And again, more housing right along the creek, right along the trail. Again, more TODs, trail side development. The other TOD, we like both TODs, trailside development and transit oriented development. So when you uh, fight for TODs in your community, think trail oriented development as well as transit oriented development. Let's do them both. You see some bollards here, keeping motor vehicles out. Very nice. It's nice when those can be used sparingly. Again, nice creekside or riverside images and sounds. Very, very pleasant. And what's your morning commute like? If your commute to and from work and other meaningful destinations and journeys is not like this, there is a wonderful opportunity for you to make this happen. And again, people grumble and say, oh, but this is just too expensive to make happen. Just stop that, it's ridiculous. Again, fractions of, pe of a penny on the dollar compared to what we spend in motor vehicle infrastructure. And if you build out an entire network of active mobility pathways, all ages and abilities, facilities, you will have the ability to shift even more car trips over to active mobility trips. And when that happens, you have a wonderful opportunity to create an environment for everybody that is truly welcoming all ages and abilities to be able to get around by walking and biking. And when you think of it, that's what we're really talking about here. It's not that hard we will spend in North America hundreds of millions of dollars just for a single interchange on a state road, a highway. And I guarantee you, this does not cost that. We need to just get it done. Okay, I'm here. I'm ready for my meetup. They said, let's meet at the Colinton Station here uh, and the Colinton Tunnel. So I think we are here. Good morning, John. I'm Mike Scott. I am the chairman of the Collington Tunnel Mural Project, but I'm more frequently known as the Chief Dafty. In uh -huh. other words, I'm the silly person who came up with the idea of creating the mural. Fantastic. We're going to, we're going to go see the mural in just a moment, uh, but I'm going to swing the camera around and get a, a quick introduction here. Hi, uh, I'm Amelia Hanna. I'm the head of the National Cycle Network Programme for Sustrans Scotland. Um, so 
We have a, a vision for a, a, a network of uh, walking and cycling paths the whole way across the UK and we're looking after that vision here in Scotland. So we're custodians of the National Cycle Network, um, just trying to connect towns and cities together by active travel to support healthier and happier lives. So yeah, really happy to be here this morning. Yeah, I love it, love it. And, and of course, you are here on the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman and fittingly, we're meeting on a trail. <laughs> talk, talk a little bit about this uh, this location, the Collington Station. Is there anything significant about this? This is part of an old railway line mm -hmm. that was set up in 1874 to look after the meads of mills that were water powered by the river that runs along behind me. Okay. There were 74 of them. Electricity hadn't been invented, so they needed water power to make the mills work. The only transport they had at the time was horses and carts and the mill owners wanted a railway to take goods in, goods out. So that was built and opened in 1874, mm -hmm. and the tunnel that we're going to go through is the only tunnel on that railway line, and uh, is 140 metres long, and interesting, as you will see. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And Amelia, um, this is, you mentioned it earlier, part of the Cycle Network uh, 75. I think I saw a, a wee bit of, of that up in the city itself, Edinburgh. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know, this uh, significance of this particular trail that we see here yeah, uh, so, and all that. Yeah, yeah, this is a really important commuter connection. So mm -hmm. we've got Collington right here and this goes all the way along to the Union Canal, which then you can cycle to get right into the heart of Edinburgh city centre. Um, so routes like these uh, provide a really great way, safe from traffic, for people to walk or cycle or, or wheel into town. Um, and that's really what we're all about uh, at Sustrand Scotland. We've got 1,620 miles of national cycle network across uh, the country, well, across Scotland, I should say. Yeah. Um, not all of it is as good quality or as special as this particular bit, but we're working hard to try to get it as accessible and uh, as easy to use for everybody in Scotland. Fantastic. Well, let's take a stroll down and check it out. Sure. All right. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful, you know, strolling along here this morning, uh, or excuse me, I was rolling, but I saw lots of people strolling along through here, walking their doggies. Uh, uh, you had mentioned, Amelia, a commuter route. I saw plenty of people going to work, as well as, uh, you know, it, it looked like a, a couple of uh, parents, you know, with their kids, That's maybe right. getting off to school. I, that's that's what these are all about, right? Is absolutely. being able to connect people to meaningful destinations. But yeah, that's absolutely it. Yeah. yeah, and it's a multi-purpose too, yeah. Because out there behind us, we've got Harriet Watt University. Uh -huh. and a lot of people who work there commute by bike or yeah. who study there. We've got mums, dads and kids coming along on the way to school and nursery. As you say, we've got runners, walkers, yeah. cyclists, dog walkers. We've got a lot coming up and down here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to keep my periphery open too because we might have some uh, commuters coming up behind oh, us absolutely. as well. So yeah, I mean, and you know, as you just mentioned, it's so incredibly important to have that spirit of it being multi-use. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, places like this are exactly the reason why I fell in love with, with cycling. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, you come here because you feel peaceful, uh, you've got the birds uh, chirping, you've got the the river, the water of Leith just down there and all of the nature. So what better place to be um, to get from your A to B? It's just so such a more pleasant experience than being caught in traffic. And so yeah. as well as getting us from A to B, it's just supporting people to, to enjoy the outdoors, to spend time outdoors. And that is so, so, so important in, yeah. in this day and age. <laughs> okay, so now we're approaching the, the tunnel here. Let's, uh, let's uh, pause just a moment. And you tell us a little bit about uh, the story. This is actually about active travel meeting economics, mm -hmm. which is an interesting take perhaps. Back in 2016, the Royal Bank of Scotland and the Bank of Scotland started closing local bank branches. Mm -hmm. And they did that all the way up this river, all the way across Scotland in fact. So communities were left without banks. Mm -hmm. Now, when you lose banks, you lose businesses. So our village and the other villages ended up with no shops. We couldn't buy a pint of milk or a newspaper or a loaf of bread without getting in the car. Crazy. So 
my idea was how do we get more people to come to the village mm -hmm. to get more footfall to keep the shops going and bring new shops yeah so that's where the crazy idea was born yeah um, it was bringing people to Collington and we had this railway tunnel now at the time it was black the lighting was nothing like you see now mm -hmm. it was scary people on their own actually often wouldn't go through it because you look you can't mm -hmm. see the other end right and that is scary so it was a crazy idea to pick up on the history of our community the history of the railway that used to run along here and create something that brought people here but instead of making them feel threatened made them feel happy made them smile but brought them out of the houses to get them here in the first place right so that's the crazy idea and the whole mural is Scotland's largest historic or heritage mural it's 140 meters long in the tunnel another 17 meters at the other end of the tunnel two of Sustrans people on the wall at the end of the tunnel yeah. um, and the key thing is that we wouldn't have got started on this without Sustrans Art Roots Fund taking a real big leap of faith and saying he looks daft but maybe yeah. he's gonna do something that matters yeah and that's where it came from yeah well I want to get to the root of the matter in terms of where it came from have you ever done anything else like this before no um, <laughs> I'm not an artist I'm a, a, by by career I'm a, a, a Royal Air Force officer mm -hmm. a manager and a management consultant yeah um, but I do come up with stupid ideas um, and this is one of them and the, the trick is if you like to use the management skills yeah. to bring good people together to talk to people who can fund you yeah. to set up a charity that can actually get tax relief you know to do all the things that happen to make it work and then to find artists and we went and talked to muralists all over Scotland in fact by email all over the world yeah. and people went no <laughs> Nobody's ever done anything like that. Yeah. But we found the one guy who said, yeah, I think I could do that. So okay. we got an art team together and it's a mixture of classical mural technique and street art. Okay. And as you'll see when we go through, the left hand side of the tunnel is a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay. Um, his granddad was the church minister here in Collington for 30 years. Ah. And so it's good to pick up on that. He also wrote a wee poem in 1885 called From a Railway Carriage mm -hmm. and you'll see that poem as we go through but it is 16 lines long and it describes a child coming out of Edinburgh perhaps for the first time on a railway train mm -hmm. and the excitement of moving from a smoky black dirty city to this green beautiful countryside yeah and you can imagine the excitement a kid would have when they've not had that experience Robert Louis Stevenson summed it up in 16 lines of posh word on a It right. goes clickety-clack, 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 like a railway train would have done. Right. Um, and that's the spine. Each line of the poetry we put on the left wall, on the right wall we put images of our community's heritage and history, and a load of other really silly things. And okay. you'll see a load of people. Yeah. They're all real people. They all live in the community, or they've all got connections with the community. and it kind of grew from there um, with a good art team and a good team of trustees working together it took us just under two years and that was including COVID. Fantastic okay and so uh, it was done uh, as of uh, when was the grand opening the ribbon cutting? There never was one. Okay. Uh, we, when we, was it done? It's it's not really done John. Okay. Um, we have got a plaque on the wall over there mm -hmm. that says we completed it in 2021. Okay. But okay. we didn't really because we deliberately left blank spaces. We sure. keep adding to it. We keep maintaining it because this tunnel's got an active microclimate. Right, yeah. Um, you'll see water running down the walls in places. So our process of maintenance is constant. Yeah. But also we want to keep adding to it because if, the, if you want to keep people interested, give them a reason to come yeah. back to active travel give them something new to look at and people say to us really every good time point. I come yes. Yes. there's something new really um, good point and uh, so 2021 was the uh, approximate completion date you yeah, know with, with, with some wiggle room in yeah, there yeah, too yeah. Uh, when when did it actually start when did some of the first paintings and first and, paint yeah. went on in June 2018 fantastic um, fantastic 
and from there we did workshops at four schools mm -hmm. because having young people invested in it is really important yeah 600 kids um, have hands on this mural that means 600 families are stakeholders that means 600 lots of friends yeah uh, are also protecting it for us yeah. we also went to local art groups average age even older than me yeah uh, and so they've got an investment in it as well and lots of other local people had hands on um, 2018 through to 2021, as you know, COVID came along in the middle of that. Right, yeah. So we had to keep stopping and starting. We also, you can't paint in a tunnel like this in the middle of winter. Uh, Your hands yeah. fall off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was stop, start, stop, start. And I'm still amazed that we did this in the time that we did. Fantastic. Brilliant. Let's go check it out. Shall I tell you how much it cost? Yeah, please do. We raised £100,000 altogether. And of that, a third came from people in the local community. Yeah. which I think is quite amazing and again is part of this thing about how you protect it is by having local people as stakeholders yeah a vested interest in it as Absolutely. well yeah it's not a hand-me-down from somebody else mm, nope they've you know not only do they have this sweat equity in it in yeah. terms of working on it but yeah they, they, they have money that. in it too yeah and it's been so successful that we've got a tunnel through an alleyway in the west of Scotland where mm -hmm. Robert Burns was born We've been advising them for two years. Okay. They're also funded a bit by uh, Sustrans. And most recently, Cork in Ireland have got a huge railway tunnel. Ah. Um, and they want to make that as a route to divert traffic from the surface underground. Mm -hmm. Sorry, when I say traffic, riding, wheeling, sure. walking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's great that we can be an exemplar and an advisor to other people. because we've made all the mistakes that could be made. Yeah. Because yeah. we learned the hard way and we can pass that experience on. Back of all of those old yeah. railway trains and giving them back to, to people for walking and cycling. And that's really how. When did this start getting established as a, a, a trail? This well, specific just, trail yeah. has, uh, the surface that you're seeing here was yeah. upgraded just last year uh, ah. by Sustrans. Uh, to, to your point from but earlier, the, yeah. The trail itself yeah. was created by two landscape architects mm -hmm. working on behalf of what was then called the City of Edinburgh Council. Mm -hmm. No, Edinburgh City Council. Mm -hmm. um, a guy called Ian Temple mm -hmm. and a lady called Charlotte Cottingham. Mm -hmm. And in those days, 1980, we had a lot of kids leaving school without qualifications mm -hmm. uh, at the age of sort of 15, 16. And they used to go on to what was called a YOPS scheme, Youth Opportunity Scheme, mm -hmm. to learn practical skills. Mm -hmm. And part of the purpose of this project was to teach kids landscaping, yeah. brick laying, path laying, painting. They actually painted the tunnel uh, just in you know, bland colours. Sure. Um, and it was young people under the guidance of these landscape architects who actually built the walkway, right. but it was the landscape architects who had the vision. And I think that's the bit that really wow. made it. And uh, approximately what year was, was that sort of happening with those about guys? About 1980. Okay, about yeah. 1980. Yeah. It was open, sorry, it was opened as a walkway officially in 1980. Okay, yeah. So it would have been in the two or three years preceding that. Sure, sure. Because this goes from Leith, which is where uh, you, you reach the Firth of Forth. Mm -hmm. the, the Water Leith walkway goes literally from Leith all the way up there to Belerno, which is what, five miles further up, four miles yeah. further mm -hmm. up? Yeah. Um, so it's a really extended off-road walkway. Right. Um, and it's, I mean, what it's done is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine in those early days, there was probably still ties and rail line, you know, rail. I've got there a picture. Too. Yeah. It's not on the website, yeah. but um, I took it four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just down here mm -hmm. before this new surface went on. Mm -hmm. And you know when aggregate gets packed hard? You're right you could see where the railway sleepers had been if yeah. it rained yeah you'd get horizontal bars where each sleeper had been yeah. because it was more compacted right and it was like the ghost of a railway line exactly it was yeah. unbelievable brilliant yeah. <laughs> so great. i used to call it the ghost yeah. train <laughs> yeah and so amelia you were just uh, uh talking about the fact that just last year we got it paved so this must have been a huge initiative 
uh, from Sustrans to try to get this improved to the point where, again, it's more accessible for all ages and abilities. That's right, and it was very much a, a partnership project. So mm -hmm. Sustrans worked in partnership um, with the Edinburgh and Lothian's Green Space Trust and mm -hmm. the Water of Leaf Conservation Trust, and we're going to meet them a little bit later on this morning. Um, coming together really to give us a, a surface that really is accessible for all users. So uh, whether you're on foot by bike or if you're in a wheelchair, if you're pushing a buggy, just really making it a, an inviting and easy to use surface for everyone. So um, yeah, really happy to, to see this completed. I think it was quite a, a, a labor of love, um, but everybody was really happy to, to see it successfully completed last year. Fantastic. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.